the uh, everything's back together, neat and tidy. Here's the big moment, so the key. Put the key in, turn it to the second position. The light, can you see, lights up. Let's turn that off. Put out the key, key in second position. Push the button, engine starts. Excellent. Okay, so today we're gonna show you wiring a push start button. Um, I've already, as you can see, taken the covering off the steering column and exposed the wires uh, from the ignition. So we'll start by finding which wire is which. There's two ways to do it. I prefer the lamp method, but I'll show you this with the a multimeter just there. As you can see, zero volts, DC. When you put one probe to earth, where are we? Just there. And touch the other one to alive. You'll see it'll come up 12 volts DC or 12 point something. That's the the trickier way, in my opinion. It's not always so easy. What I like is a test lamp. This little thing, clip to earth, and you've got a spike on the end there, and you just probe through the insulation and when it lights up you've got 12 volts so you can see we've started there so that key is out so no key in find that cable that's live all the time that's your plus 12 permanent live just make a note of that so that red one next up pop the key in Turn it to the first position, you can hear the whirring, and find which one is live in this case. So, yellow is live there, orange, not live, permanent live, still live, blue, no, and then two reds at the back here, live, not live, okay. Turn the key to position two, all the dash lights come on. This is your on position, so the first one was accessory, this one is on. Yellow, still alive. Orange, still alive. Permanent live, still alive. Blue, not. Live, live. So make a note of those. So the yellow was the accessory, that's first position is accessory. That's live in position one. What you want is one which is live when you turn the key to the crank position. So this orange one that I'm probing now was on in position two for the key. And we want it to stay live when the key turns to the engine start position. So yes, it does. You need that, that's on two. That's what I call on two. Uh, next up, we'll turn the engine off again. You want one that's dead in position one and position two. So position one, dead, this is the blue. Position two, also dead. And when you start the engine, we want it to light up like that. That's your start position. So just to recap, we found that the red is permanently live. Yellow was on in position one, that's accessory, we don't, we don't need that one. This orange one was on in position two and also on when cranking the engine. Uh, I call that on two and I found that this blue one was only live when the, the, you turn the key to start the car and that's the start wire, so we want that one as well. So now I've taken the negative off of the battery just to uh, make sure we don't get any shocks or shorts or anything like that. Um, if you'll probe the permanently live cable, you can see absolutely nothing on it. Good. So the next thing is to strip the cables that we're after. So the, the permanently live onto and the ignition. I'm going to use a sharp knife for this. This is not a terribly good one. I'd rather use a Stanley, but I forgot mine, so never mind. Um, all you do is score a couple of bands all the way around the cable. Mm, approximately two centimeters apart and then slice along the cable 
and take the insulation off, exposing the copper. You don't want to cut the copper that's in the cable. Um, that's going to be tricky to do while I'm holding the cord, so camcorder, so I'm going to pause it and expose it and then show you. So back in a sec. This is the relay set up for the, the, uh, the button. According to the instructions of this, green is to earth. The red, thick red, well there's only one red, with the fuse on is to the positive 12 and the thick black is for the uh, starter. And then there's a yellow and green just here which goes to on two. Um, so next up, with those colours in mind, we're just going to connect them to these. A lot of people I've seen on videos use crimps to get into these wires. I think there's too much current involved to be using little crimps. So I prefer this soldering technique. Um, to get in there, it's best to separate the cores. So get a little screwdriver in there, separate those, make a hole, and then you can poke your wire that you're connecting through and wrap it around. So I'll do that with these three and then come back to you again. So there they are wrapped around uh, through the cable. Only took me a few minutes. Um, next up is to solder them. I've got my soldering iron down here ready heating up. Um, if you've not soldered before or you've not you know, practiced at it, have a little practice. It doesn't take long to get quite proficient. Um, I'm going to make another little video soon showing soldering for joining cables like this. So imagine this is say the ignition cable that you want to join on to. We've got the thinner cable that we will you know, join on to it. So we'll start with stripping this. Take a knife, a nice sharp one, to score around the cable. Don't press too hard otherwise you'll end up slicing the conductor. And then a little bend if you can. It's just a little pressure and you'll see the conductor appears in there. Do that all the way around. <clears throat> little wiggle. Good. And then a couple of centimetres along do the same thing. Good. And then take your knife and just slice carefully along between the two, two scores. Good. So and then you can get your nail in there, just separate that last bit. And Voila, one exposed conductor. This next one, a little bit more simple because it's an end, you can just get your strippers on it. Strip. A little bit of a twist. Okay, so you've got your two ends. Next up, just separate the strands. I've just got a pencil here, it's, it's quite nice, it's not too sharp or anything. Just make a loop like that. Take this, just put it through the loop and then bend it and you can close the loop up and twist the one you're joining onto around, sorry the one you're joining onto the around the one you're joining onto. So you end up with that Oop, wrong way. Good. So onto the soldering. Make sure your soldering iron is up to heat. Mine, mine's a, a plug-in one, but you can get gas-powered ones and all, all sorts of different types. Ones that heat up in seconds. Just uh, tin the tip a little. Put it onto the conductor. 
leave it for a few seconds to heat the conductor up and then just feed some feed some solder onto it you'll see I'm not touching the tip of the iron I'm putting the solder directly onto the conductor and it's melting okay, so do that all the way along you'll see as you go in that the solder flows through all the strands of the copper or aluminium if you're soldering aluminium just tin the tip again and the same the other side press it on hold it for a few seconds and feed in some solder give it a few seconds to cool down and then you've got a nice soldered joint no big blobs or anything hanging around off it very strong wrap it in tape, insulation tape or if you can get a, a heat shrink on it make sure it's nicely insulated that's it okay so moving on I've twisted these, soldered them up and you can see I've wrapped them in insulating tape, a decent one's a good choice and then put a couple of cable ties either end, one to take the strain of anything that happens to the cable if anything does and two just in case the tape's a bit comes unstuck with the heat or whatever it'll stop it coming right off and then I've put the cables down here tied them along in places and found a nice position for the relay to sit. Next up is mounting the actual button so here's my button this is the spot I've chosen I've actually marked it with a little pen anyway it's worth finding maybe having a practice on something making sure you don't drill too big a hole to start with otherwise you're knackered then you have to find another piece of plastic to put behind it um, I'm just gonna drill a hole make sure there's nothing behind it I can get my hand right up the back of this and uh, touch the back of the plastic where I'm going to drill so that's good to go so I'm going to drill a hole mount the button and then show you what's, what the result is okay so just to recap what we've done we've found our cables joined on to them run our cables down with the ignition wiring tuck the relay up there nicely this is our earth, uh, it was a little short actually so I've had to join it to another piece which is red but the car doesn't care what colour and join that to an earth point. Um, next thing, these are the plugs from the button which I've mounted up here and as you can see I've used a washer because this is soft dashboard, quite hard to mount one of these buttons to. It's much easier on a piece of this hard plastic which is thinner easier to just drill a nice hole and put the washer on the back so I've done that looks quite nice though and then there's cables here from the button that's going onto the cables here from the ignition loom so next thing is plug these on like for like colour wise and then reconnect the battery and test it so I'll plug it on and get it back as you can see I've refitted the battery negative yeah. Everything's back together, neat and tidy. Here's the big moment, so the key. Put the key in, turn it to the second position. The light, can you see, lights up. Let's turn that off. That the key, key in second position. Push the button, engine starts. Excellent. That's the end of the video, thanks for watching.